now we have a hands-on use case on stage with Jan Nieswand from SICK and Joachim Finke from Harting. Welcome, guys. It's a vision use case. Uh, and in my opinion, we always talk about uh, predictive maintenance and stuff like that. But in my opinion, vision is the first step for companies to get in touch with AI and machine learning. I think because you can realize very fast results with vision. And I'm really looking forward to your presentation. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I mean, there is, there is already some, uh, some maturity in AI usage in uh, industrial vision. And um, yeah, after some, without judging, more generic uh, presentations, which, which I really enjoyed and I, I myself learned a lot, um, I will now go down a little bit more into the production line, into the actual benefits that um, yeah, you as a producing uh, um, company can actually gain by using AI and machine vision. So what are the chances and what are the restrictions that uh, go go hand in hand with the users of, of this technology. So what did you sign up for? Huh? What, what will happen today? Of course, I will, I will guide you and uh, a little bit about you know, what drives us, what considerations do we make as ZIG, as a sensor producer, to give you the best product, the, the best benefit um, in yeah, machine vision, in quality inspection, but also in other areas. Obviously, high-quality image data for best performance is, is crucial. Um, but after that, I will jump directly to the, let's say, main topic for today and uh, show you the, yeah, how to activate the potential of AI in your machine vision application, but also show some, I would not say disadvantages, but some specialities that you have to take into consideration. And after that, I will yeah, move over to our little lab area and do a, a live demo. Um, not so much focusing on the application itself, but showing you how easy it is to yeah, set up a uh, yeah, quite sophisticated uh, inspection application without the need of programming or even having, let's say, sophisticated vision skills. So looking at our customers, from our customers' perspective, what, what drives the market? And I think it's not a, let's say, a news for anyone our production processes will not be less demanding in the future. There's a high demand for quality, and uh, that is combined with an extreme um, high uh, cost pressure. So we understand that there is more room for automation to meet these demands, and even more frequent process check and inspections, for example, with vision systems. This trend is somehow met with a yeah, lack of, um, or the, the mega trend of, you know, lack of skilled workers. There's, a, let's say, high workload on individual persons running a production line. So higher complexity, multitasking. So our extraction for that is vision systems must, must be easy to use, easy to set up. It shouldn't take a lot of time to, yeah, take care of a vision system. And you need robust processes without a lot of fine tuning. Last but not least, we see the trend that scalability is extremely important for our customer. They want to solve a big bandwidth of uh, applications without the demand for getting used to individual systems. So same look and feel is extremely important and also the scalability to really have a cost-effective and simple system in the end. We interpret this as, um, as you will later see, you know, with a common front end for many sensors and applications and also still the flexibility to open, let's say, customization uh, capabilities for, for our customers. So we have high standards, but also um, the room for um, customization. And we have two, let's say, global trends or two assets that really pay into fulfilling these goals. One is our Nova platform, a common, common front end, software front end that includes a lot of 2D and 3D sensors um, yeah, with the same look and feel. So if you know one sensor, you already are able to uh, set up the, the other sensor. And of course, as a main topic for today, deep learning technology seamlessly integrated in our products is really crucial element to improve our customer processes. 
just real quick, because uh, I'm, we are a little bit on, under time pressure here, what are we offering? Um, we are a sensor uh, company for many years. We have a, a wide variety of 2D machine version sensors, but also 3D, different technologies. And our ZIG Nova um, environment is actually something that you know from your, from your smartphone. So we have some kind of an app concept. You can load and install different apps with different functionalities on your camera and also really seamlessly integrate deep learning tools here. So our statement really is that Nova as a front end solves the complexity of industrial vision. Just a quick overview about our portfolio. I want to highlight here the Inspector 8 series that we are um, yeah, just launching uh, right now in, uh, in Q1. Um, these are cameras that already have AI accelerator ships on board, so we can really take advantage of all the potential that this, um, let's say, technology has in hand for us, even at high speeds with large field of views, um, big pictures, there is, there is, let's say, no limit also to bring this into, into your solution already today. Just for completion, our 3D vision portfolio. Also here we have a huge range of uh, possible applications with different technologies, laser triangulation, time of flight technology, stereo vision. Not yet ready for, let's say, AI approaches, but just to let's say, spoiler a little bit, um, having maybe the possibility to analyze a 3D point cloud with uh, AI algorithms, I think is a quite um, yeah, exciting um, idea. And uh, stay tuned maybe for that. So coming to the main topic of today, what actually has, what is in, in stock for us using AI? Um, and again, not to spoiler, I, I will not be the guy to say, AI will solve all of your problems, forget about rule-based vision, um, it, it's not that. It gives us chances to push the envelope, to push um, our productivity, to improve our processes by optimization. So you might be able to reduce manual work, um, reduction of fall, fall rejects, and just get, um, let's say, or gain product reliability. So more robust processes um, by using yeah, a higher degree of, of automation. You can also improve already existing inspections, maybe with additional inspections. Um, I, will, I will later show you the anomaly detection, um, where you actually can find errors in your production or in your part uh, inspection that you, do, that you don't even know yet. So that can be a big, dis uh, a big advantage for you to get better results and even reduce waste in your production. Last but not least, and take this with a, with a grain of salt, but um, there is some chance to even reduce the needed hardware that you want to, um, let's say, install in your production. Um, of course, if you, if you have bad images, don't expect to have uh, miracles just by using AI. But we have seen a lot of cases where, yeah, you get very robust results even under challenging conditions, so you can extract more information from the same image data that would not be so useful with a rule-based approach. So that could end up in yeah, slimmer uh, uh, solutions, um, less struggle for your commissioning, less struggle for, um, for, your, for your production line. And one very important thing um, is to lower the entry level of, um, yeah, of, of dealing with the with a complex topic of vision, um, vision inspections. You will later see there is no need for any um, programming, there is no need for any, um, uh, let's say, uh, uh, yeah, fine-tuning, but AI gives us the, um, the possibility to just, based on rule, sample examples of a, of a picture, create very powerful and very sophisticated solutions. So, you will be able to master your system even without, you know, deep vision knowledge. So what's actually the difference between a rule-based approach and an AI approach in, in vision? And I always uh, like this example quite a lot. Um, it has been some kind of a standard in the, in the industry. I think back in time, already a couple of years ago, this was kind of a challenge. Um, there was a data set provided to let's say machine vision and AI specialists that consists of cats and dogs. 
uh, in different environments, at home, in the garden, whatever, different uh, types of cats, different size and dogs. So quite, um, let's say, for a rule-based approach, a quite uh, a complex task. Um, for, the human, for the human brain, uh, yeah, a, a no-brainer, so to say. But if you look at it from a machine vision perspective, I, as a, let's say, machine vision engineer, would sit down and uh, identify rules that I can use to distinguish a cat from a dog. So what would that be? Do I look for the ears and, and let's say, measure how pointy they are? Or do I look at the color of the, uh, of the animal? Or do I, I measure the distance between the eyes? But you quickly notice, okay, this is not so, this is not so easy. So after many, let's say, iterations and optimization processes, I can somehow come up with an answer because I defined the rules, but is that really satisfying result? How does an AI approach for, in this case, for a classification work? I still have to do some work, but it's, it's, it's less demanding. So you, you notice the, the head is already shrinked a little bit because you don't need it so much anymore. What you do here in the AI approach is you tell the system all this all these pictures in this sample set are pictures of cats, and all these, the other ones, are pictures of dogs. And then the AI does the magic and identifies commonalities within the data sets of the individual classes, and also um, yeah, features that are able to distinguish between those. So you see, um, there, is, there is no need for any, for any let's say, deep um, input by the user. You just have to do the labeling. Um, as you notice, the, the, the error, the, the, the black arrow says rules, um, and it's, it's dark. Why is it dark? Because this is a little bit the black box phenomenon that you do have with an AI approach. So you cannot actually tell, okay, what kind of feature actually guided uh, the, the system to, to make this decision or the other one. But you can say better results, shorter time, less know-how, and even with challenging data, that's where AI really gets um, yeah, its benefits. So, is the job done? No, it's not. Um, I always say you still have to do your vision homework. So garbage in, garbage out. If you have bad data, you know, uh, an unstable condition, uh, a lot of fluctuation in your illumination and stuff like that, you will not get a, a good result. And of course, there is a demand for data in the first place. So if you want to train uh, an AI based on, um, on vision data, yeah, you have to acquire it first. And that's often, often a problem. You need the right kind of, uh, of images. You need the right kind of samples. Um, the necessity for data can be huge. So we have uh, use cases where we, where we train uh, tens of thousands of images to get a, a real good result. And there is still some need of human input that has to do the labeling. Um, so it's not work free. But yeah, you have to get the data first. And one issue again, you have to also understand the black box situation. So it's more a work on an empirically uh, manner. So um, yeah, it's a little bit trial and error. That's not always what we're used to as engineers. And yeah, we want to do a calculation and see that the outcome is as we predicted. And here it's, it's more like, um, yeah, a little bit empirical manner. And um, you have to rethink and maybe define process to elevate, um, uh, evaluate and qualify your solution and also create acceptance within your own organization. If you talk to a quality manager, he has a different opinion about a black box situation in his risk assessment than a, than a let's say, line manager that is looking for 20% uh, um, uh, process improvement. So understand the technology. Last but not least, use AI when it makes sense. Again, it's not the, the magic stick that will solve everything, but it can be a good combination between AI tools and rule-based tools that actually gives you the best value in the end. So pick the right solution, and obviously, yeah, um, that's also where we would support you as, as, a, as a provider. Uh, one, one uh, let's say, funny clip, I always like to, to pull that up. Um, it's actually also important what you feed into the, into the system. Um, in this case, I can recommend the, this show from John Oliver about AI, uh, really funny, al almost a year old, but still quite um, uh, on time, on topic. Um, and he, he pointed out, okay, what you feed into actually, uh, let's say, gives you, gives you the result. Um, 
Here it's an it's a evaluation of birthmarks. Are they critical or are they non-critical? And it turned out the, the whole data set was not able to really f perform well because on all the critical uh, pictures there was already a tape measure in. So if, you, if your doctor decided to put a tape measure in, in, your, um, in, the, in the picture of that birthmark, it was more likely to be judged as a critical um, birthmark than the, the ones with the other ones. So in the end, the AI was just trained on, is there a, a tape measure in the picture, and didn't even care about the birthmark at all. So that's something you actually have to know before you train your, your network and train your, um, your AI. So to wrap, wrap it up, um, how was the, let's say, work within uh, um, ZIG going on? Now we started in logistics um, yeah, with, um, let's say, more embedded, uh, more um, uh, AI in the background. But now over time, we are moving more and more to the front, to the edge devices, to customers really be able to um, use AI, use AI tools in their production line without really sophisticated knowledge. So... Um, yeah, time is rushing. Um, exactly. I will go over to the to the lab uh, uh, built up here, and um, yeah. All right. So we come to the to the live demo. Um, so on yesterday afternoon, when when Jan arrived, we a little bit surprised him because we said, okay, um, for sure he will come to to here to Harting with his sample case and typical sample cases he is usually doing. Um, but we said, okay, why not taking um, a sample, a quality case. Um, out of the Harting production. Yeah? So Harting has more than 60,000 uh, components being used in our production line, um, fully automated um, assembly lines, and you can imagine that quality check is really a big challenge. And one example we took with us is here is an M12 connector, where in the mating phase, if the ceiling is not really molded 100% properly, um, the connector is at the end of the day not really um, IP protected against IP65. And so we have provided um, some good samples to Jan, uh, some, some bad samples as well. And now I'm curious to see if the promise he has just given um, really is able to, to be confirmed. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, you see here our little vision setup. I brought two cameras um, to show some, some use cases here. Um, and yeah, if possible, please switch to my, um, to my laptop screen. And what you see here is actually, yeah, what I talked about, the Nova front end. This will be the, let's say, the front end, the operating uh, view about um, many or pretty much all of our 2D and 3D sensors. So you will get a, if you get used to operating one, you will already know how to, to act with the other. Um, so, yeah, what I did here, um, uh, uh, let's say, Defect that uh, Joachim just described um, is, is a perfect match for anomaly detection. So what do you do with anomaly detection? Um, first of all, you, let's say, define the, your area of interest. I did that here with the two circles, so I'm, I'm interested in the area between these uh, two circles. And um, then it works as follows. You just train on good images, so you don't even need a bad image to, let's say, train this uh, solution. Um, and um, here you see there is one folder where I can, you know, out of my live stream, more or less, can train my good images. And just for, let's say, setting the threshold um, um, for, for a bad image, I will, I will need or I can use a, a bad image as well. Um, so I do the training based, of the, uh, based on these uh, images and the results are shown here. So the tool gives us an anomaly score. That's, um, let's say... Um, a score that uh, indicates what um, and how much um, picture difference is there really in the um, in the in the picture. And if we look here, um, yeah, we can see um, this is um, already in the evaluation uh, tool or in the evaluation um, capability. Um, based on that heat map here, you see there is a there is a defect that is not present in the in the good images. Um, so yeah, what we can do here, I, I will now insert the the bad part. Um, again, I always like these live demos. Um, other people drive motorcycles for assignment. Um, I do live demos uh, with a big audience. Um, yeah, um, but if I if I go back to the to the screen now, so I, I put the the defect part under um, under the camera, uh, and here you can see um, we are we are getting a, a normally score of um, of eighty four. I set my threshold here around um, uh, 37, 
So it um, rips this uh, threshold and um, we have a def defective part here. Um, I know time is rushing, but still I want to, to show you another, um, let's say, discipline that we, that we do uh, conquer here on these devices, um, that is classification. And um, yeah, it, it might sound like a, let's say, trivial uh, use case here, but um, just to identify uh, two different um, um, items and check whether yeah, there is a, let's say, a, a mix-up or whether I really install the right product is, um, is, is a common use case in a, in a production environment. And um, again here, just based on you know, giving examples um, of the, the two different classes that I want to distinguish, or it can be more, it can be, can be five, it can be six, up to 10 on device, um, is, is, quite, um, is quite crucial. And um, yeah, so right now, um, if, we, if we go back to the screen, you can see this is a, the connector side, so the stecker. And if I, um, if I make a new picture, it's, it's a, um, let's say it's an Anschluss side. So um, again, don't focus here on the application itself, but the only thing I did was show the system, okay, this is, uh, um, this, this, these are pictures of uh, class A, these are pictures of class B, and um, automatically out of that, I can do the training all on device. I don't need an internet connection or whatsoever. Um, yeah, really to bring the power of this technology into, into production lines all over yeah, the industry. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure, Jan. Yeah, you're welcome. Great use case. We only have two minutes for the break now. Okay. So grab yourself very quickly a coffee and then we go on with Theo. Uh, thank you very much for the pleasure. Thank you. And uh, yeah. Two minutes break, and then we will go on. Thank you. Mm -hmm.